Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're here for our sixth year at VMworld 2015. We're here in Moscone North this year. For the last five years we've been in Moscone South. If you're at the show, come see us, we're at the street level. We're going to talk about machine learning and big data and analytics really injecting into the IT operations and infrastructure management. Jerry Melnick is here, he's the COO of a company called Sios, and Tom Matson is here with Sandisk. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having us, Dave. Thanks, Jerry, Dave. we first met, uh, we had a really interesting discussion at the Wikibon offices around how do you apply big data analytics to solve some of these nagging problems. I remember the first VMworld I ever came to, I came to the realization that, wow, it's really complicated to understand what's going on inside that system. Talk a little bit about SIOS and how you solve that problem. Yeah, that's exactly the problem we're after. I mean, clearly everybody out there, had, you know, this, this environment's evolved over the last 10 years. You know, we've taken sort of monitoring tools, what I call first generation analytics tools, and what we're doing is really taking it the next step and trying to use and apply, and, and applying big data and data analytics, sort of the stuff that's been used in biological sciences, uh, they're using financial services to really understand IT operations data and, tr and answer some of the tough questions that people haven't been able to answer before. So Tom, uh, SanDisk has had a really interesting evolution. I mean, everybody obviously knows you, you guys do the sticks, right? But there's so <laughs> much more to your transformation, a uh, lot of software components, really a, becoming a major enterprise player. Talk a little bit about your journey and how you got here. Well, I think if you look at SanDisk as a whole, yes, everybody knows us for the USB sticks yeah. or what goes in your camera, but it's really the same fundamental technology, and, and we are a flash company no matter what we do, and it's now moving into the data center in a big way, and in addition to the hardware that you probably are aware of, where we've got PCIe cards, Fusion I.O., uh, SAS and SATA SSDs, like you mentioned, we've got software now that makes it easier for customers to adopt flash in that data center, and that's where our FlashSoft server-side caching software fits in. And that's really where you came into the, to the company. So exactly. you've got a software heritage. And it, so, so the culture is changing, right? It's becoming, everything's software defined now. So how are you guys working together to solve this problem, Jerry? Yeah, well clearly this is a, a SanDisk house-based caching problem. is sort of a perfect example of a use case for advanced analytics. And we've developed a new product we just announced, IOS IQ, and we're showing here and debuting here at the show. And that's an analytics platform that's broadly uh, capturing data across all the dimensions around that infrastructure. And uh, we're doing it in performance, efficiency, reliability areas, as well as capacity. In the Sandus case, and where we, where, where we uh, complement each other quite well, is you know, how do we help customers who have storage issues uh, identify the workloads uh, that are really suffering and that can be managed by applying SanDisk technology and flash soft technology to implement host space caches to reduce latencies, uh, in, improve throughput, and, and really get the value out of, out of the system that they have. So, so FlashSoft uses the concept of Flash as a host-based caching layer, is that right? Can you just elaborate and add a little color Yeah, to that? so we, the software takes any Flash device in the server and uses that to store the hot data that we've identified with our algorithms to accelerate those applications. We are automatically moving that data from the back-end storage into that local flash. So as an IT person, you don't have to, it's a hands-free thing. The real challenge with you know, where, where Jerry steps in and helps out is that while customers look at our benchmarks and our marketing material and say, that's great, they oftentimes want to get a real sense of, hey, how's this going to work with my application? I'm different, you know, my applications are running a little differently. And that's where SIO software can step in and show them kind of behind the scenes, but looking at their exact application, how is this going to benefit from server-side caching? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jerry, take us through how that works. So, so you're using all kinds of math and <laughs> machine learning and, and other you know, big data algorithms to identify what, where the, where the hot spots are, where the bottlenecks are. Take us through, yes. paint a picture for us. So our product basically is a simple download and install software capability that uh, that you install, and, and we acquire- No agents. No agents, completely, you know, very simple. Actually, I should say, simplicity was sort of a core design center that we chose. We said, you know, we're going to do this big data uh, analytics play, but you got to have it delivered very consumably. So we built a nice user interface that's touch and mobile, 
We acquire the data broadly across the infrastructure, the virtual machines, uh, we, we look at CPU uh, memory host uh, uh, performance, we look, we look at all the IOPS on network and storage. Uh, we, we pull that all into a single repository across the infrastructure and then we do an analysis for uh, across the performance to try to understand, is this a storage problem, is it an application problem? If it's a storage problem, how in the way, uh, what can we do in, in the way of uh, recommending improvements by using host-based caching to improve that uh, storage capability? Okay, so you don't remediate, but you suggest where the problem is. How does the remediation occur? Go well, right this ahead. is the, uh, it was, we talked earlier, the uh, find it and fix it, right? Yeah. Um, so what he they, finds it, you it, fix we it. We find it and we <laughs> fix it. So in addition to what I talked about with the uh, kind of this initial customer concern of is this going to benefit me, what areas, which particular VMs do I need to accelerate, as, as you're operating, the environment changes, right? You can have VMs that may have a peak workload at a certain time of day, and that's what Jerry's software can find our software can change configurations very easily, transparently behind the scenes, and the customer, as they see things maybe getting a little bit, okay, this, this application, this VM's getting out of whack, they can make the changes in our FlashSoft software, in the caching, to fix that and optimize for the right configuration. So when you say make the changes, Tom, um, I mean, a lot of customers, you, earlier you were saying it's sort of automated, you know, kind of hands yep. off, yep. a lot of customers like knobs to turn, just to just because they like to play with things, True. but then over time they sort of become more comfortable and let the system take control. H how does a typical use case work? So th this would be a customer, let's say you've got somebody running a, a host with, I'll simplify it to a single host, but a host with 20 virtual machines. And they know that 10 of those are where they've got a critical application need. They've had some of their users complaining. You can go in there and identify those 10 and say only those 10 VMs are the ones that can have access to this caching, this local flash capability. The other 10 will continue to get access to data as they normally would through the back-end storage array. So you can kind of start, you could start with as little as one, right? You know there's one VM, and then you can gradually progress and start adding VMs. We also have customers on the other end that just start with everything. We'll accelerate everything, then Jerry's software can tell them how to refine that. You know, how do I get better at this? How do I optimize for what I'm doing? So what do you guys got going on at the show, Jerry? So you got a booth uh, here? Yeah, we, have a, we have a, a big booth with uh, a, a touch screen, 70 inch touch screen demo. We can show you sort of how we operate very quickly. With one touch, you literally can get to the answer of which virtual machines, which disks, uh, and which ones, and how to configure host-based caching to best optimize your performance. That's only one use case in that whole piece, and, and identifying and fixing a problem may or may not be related to storage performance. So if, you, if you're not doing a big data analysis of that, you're not really taking into account all the other factors. So for instance, maybe it's not a storage issue, maybe it really is an application that's, that's just out of control, a noisy neighbor or whatnot. So being able to identify sort of the root cause of a problem, is it storage, will it benefit by host-based caching, uh, is it really uh, CPU bound? is really part of that whole problem. So here at the show, we're demonstrating all of that. So describe, I mean, you just announced uh, Cyos IQ a couple months ago. That's right. But you started it, it with, with VMware. Mm -hmm. it, thinking about the blame pie of performance <laughs> management problems, what's your data tell you so far? Who's, who's, who's the most to blame? We talk about storage a lot. I would <laughs> imagine storage is a big culprit, but how does it break down? Yeah, so obviously we're going straight at storage problems right away. So we're collecting a lot of our data there right now today because 80% of the stuff you see out there, clearly everybody's recognized as storage contention. But applications are very uh, problematic as well. And so understanding what's coming out of the application and how it's impacting the environment, how it's changed is really important. And then of course networking. Those two, those are all in interrelated, right? So Tom, a lot of people would say, Oh, I don't get it. Flash, doesn't it change everything? You just throw a flash array at it, all flash array, and all of my performance problems go away. What's missing in that analysis? Uh, there's a couple angles there that you can look at, uh, and that certainly is a, a potentially good solution for some customers. If you're talking about a flash array, you are still potentially talking about network, uh, network traffic being a potential bottleneck there, you're, you're not local to the, the host and the application, so there's a little bit of latency, uh, and there's an expense there. So, you know, what we're offering is kind of a solution that gets to a, maybe a little bit more of a, a middle ground, we kind of call it 80-20, where sort of for 20% of the price, you can get 80% of the benefit of going with all flash. 
So given that it's such a storage focus on the problem areas, and this is, it's been at least, at least 30 to 50%, maybe even more a storage show in the last <laughs> several years, and you have this sort of interesting dynamic where a storage company owns VMware, VMware historically, as it relates to storage, they said, okay, here's a bunch of APIs ecosystem, go solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing VMware get more aggressive about with things like you know, vSAN, grabbing little pieces of the stack. So Tom, I'll start with you. What's your perspective on, as an ecosystem player, the white space, the opportunity, VMware's moves, where you guys fit, how you see that evolving from your strategic standpoint? So uh, it's certainly an interesting time to be in this, in this position. Uh, just today, we had an announcement in conjunction with an announcement from VMware uh, of a new API that they're uh, announcing for their 6.0 product called VAIO. It's vSphere API for IO filtering. So they announced that this morning and we announced our FlashSoft 4.0 product that will be uh, implementing that particular interface. We were the design partner for them on that particular interface. So you have the SDK, you were first to get it. <laughs> so we, we have been working for quite a while with them on this. No so comment on that. So we're, right. No comment on that part, but, uh, but we're pretty excited about that and the benefits that it's going to bring to server-side caching moving forward through the 6.0 platform. So we see our relationship with VMware as being very, very close. EMC was another design partner for them on another aspect of the API. So uh, I think they're, they're doing a nice job of working with the ecosystem. So this is, this is leveraging vSphere you know, to a greater extent? Is that what this is all about? Or? Yeah, it's really, it's giving us access through an interface to the capabilities that we need out of the hypervisor to be able to deliver better latency, you know, kind of making the software stack a little bit more efficient for us, letting us deliver clustered solutions, um, letting us still deliver right back capabilities efficiently. So there's a lot of ways that we can take advantage so of these. So deeper integration, really. Ex exactly. Okay, now, Jeff, so Jerry, from your standpoint, I, I, I'm presuming that right now, anyway, you don't care. It's like, okay, great, let, let, let VMware get as aggressive as it wants in storage or not. You know, we're, we're solving a, a different problem. Is that, is that fair or? Do you see sort of, you know, the, at some point it becomes, you know, a strategic fork in the road for you guys? I mean, you know, really, where everything's going in a software-defined data center is actually sort of exactly what, what the problems that we're, gonna, uh -huh. we're looking at. Um, you know, you have to be able to acquire data. The more you do uh, scale out, you have to be able to acquire data across that infrastructure, accumulate that, and really identify where's the problem. You know, where is it? You know, and as we scale out, that problem just gets larger because it's going to be harder and harder for people to find it. And if you don't apply advanced analytics, we don't really apply that next generation of data mining, uh, you're really not going to apply the intelligence that you really need to make these systems work. So when VMware first came out, I mean, it was, you know, remember the first VMware demo you ever saw? You, your jaw dropped and you went, wow, this is going to change everything. And it did, and, and obviously the ascendancy of, of VMware followed. Now they're a big company. Right? Everybody's taking pot shots at them. You got sort of OpenStack, you got Docker, you got Amazon coming out. So, and of course, you know, VMware has to expand its TAM. It's a big company, mm -hmm. it's got to keep growing, public company, you know, and, and so. So my question is, with their VMware, where do you see this whole thing going? You talk about scale out. Um, what's your take on VMware? Obviously it's a big opportunity for you. You started there Absolutely. with Cyus IQ, huge customer base, the industry's best customers from an enterprise standpoint, everybody runs VMware, but there's a crossroads here. What's your take on what's going on here? Yeah, well, you know, clearly with uh, some of the announcements today and, and the hybrid cloud approaches, this is all going to be a variety of resources. We saw that actually in our high availability offering, how people are moving off of physical, virtual into cloud and using a variety of all those. And so VMware clearly is, is going to be a place where they're, where they're doing and want to do exactly that. So for us, it's, 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 some, it's ideal. We are a platform. Uh, VMware certainly is our first target, but it's not exactly where we're going to stay. Uh, we have to acquire, to, in order to be effective and, and to really get out there, we're going to be acquiring data from every type of platform, whether it's an OpenStack platform, whether it, it's, it's a Hyper-V platform, et cetera, uh, or applications across those. So we, the problem is one of data and, and how to analyze it. Hey, Tom, you guys are an arms dealer, so. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> you stole my analogy. I was, right. was going to question whether <laughs> I should use that no, analogy, I mean, it's, but it's, yes. It's, 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 I think it's fair to say, you're really. Battle you know, it away, everybody. Right? That's kind of a, yeah. As long as you I'll, need more storage and you got I'll, a performance I'll, issue. So talk through that, that, that plan a little bit. It, it's exactly what you said there, right? As, as all of this I.O. needs to be funneled through different aspects of the, the network, different parts of the data center, 
I mean, it's, it's just going to become a Flash world here, right? I mean, Flash is going to be everywhere. There's going to be multiple levels of Flash, right? So management of data, even in an all-Flash world, there's still going to end up being, you know, you're going to need to have your Flash that's the highest performance Flash. Maybe it's on a, a dim slot, you know, slot or maybe uh, you've got a, a lower cost Flash array that you may have as your back end. We see all these trends that are happening and, and what VMware is doing is nothing but positive. You know, we had an interesting this, uh, conversation this morning with Deeraj, the CEO of, of Nutanix, and he was he almost, I, I, my takeaway was, he was saying, you know, the whole DevOps meme, we may have gone just too far, that infrastructure still really matters. It's not like just infrastructure is going to go away and, and, and even though their tagline is infrastructure, make it invisible. Uh, there's still a, a real complicated piece, but, but the roles are changing. You know, the mm -hmm. traditional storage admin, you know, and the Lund management aspects are kind of, you know, perceived as less value. People are trying to get, you know, new training and new skill sets there. What do you see, Jerry, happening at the organizational level in the, in the, in the roles? That's a great question, and it's really interesting because given what we're talking about today, we obviously cross those roles. So what we, right. we run into are very different kinds of organizations, and you can very well identify those organizations who are thinking exactly about this problem, and when we come in and talk about what we're doing, it resonates very well because they've already taken and put an overlay over those, those silos that, that have been operating so many years in the, in the IT organizations, uh, and they're thinking about that, and then you have sort of, I guess you would call it more old school environments where it strictly is uh, silo, and it's very difficult, if not impossible, to find the right people to talk to yet. But you know, you know that that has to change in the world that we're going and where, where we're headed. And, and Tom, are you seeing, I mean, I imagine you are, that's just the affinity between the flash and, the, and the, the application development people and how that's sort of changing the way in which they operate. Yeah, I think uh, as we go over these next, uh, next year or two, you're going to see even more integration between those two groups because flash, as it becomes more pervasive throughout the environment, all of a sudden you're an application developer, you look at this flash, you say, hey, if I can find a way to, you know, to write to that particular capability, or I know that this flash capability is going to be here, you know, there's more and more opportunities for optimization, taking advantage of what flash can truly bring to the picture. All right, that last question, we love to ask, ask the bumper sticker question. You know, so much has changed in the last five years, so Tom, I'll start with you. The bumper sticker on you know, VMworld, 2015, you know, if you get a good, get a good tagline, our guys might put you on Twitter. <laughs> What's the bumper sticker? A trending topic. Yeah, you'll be trending, right. <laughs> VMworld 2015 from Sandus perspective. Uh, let's see, how about uh, honk if you're integrating more Flash this year or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, that's good. Honk if you're integrating more Flash, I love it. All right, Jerry, how about from Sios? I would say standpoint? software defined everywhere. <laughs> SDD everything. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. It's great Excellent. to have you. Yeah. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from VMworld 2015 in Moscone. We'll be right back.